The Role of Rui Akhanim in the Abandonment of the Guardianship The role of Rui Akhanim, Shoghi Effendi's widow, played in the abandonment of the guardianship is provoking. After the death of Shoghi Effendi, she believed that no future guardian would be forthcoming. Being the First Lady of the Faith, she immediately took on the responsibility for directing the faith. In her first cablegram after Shoghi Effendi's death, she announced that the Guardian was sick. This has become a controversial statement. Some Guardianists contend that Rahee Khanum started her efforts to rid the faith of the Guardianship with an outright lie. In a subsequent cablegram to the IBC in Haifa, she urged Baha'is to remain steadfast, cling to the institution of the hands lovingly reared, recently reinforced. Then in a cablegram to all NSA on November 6, 1957, she announced that any press releases should state that the hands would be meeting in Haifa soon to make an announcement to Baha'is regarding future plans. When she speaks of the guardianship being an open question she is most likely alluding to conflicts between Mace and Remy, one of the custodian's hands. Remy insisted that the guardianship was necessary, whereas she and most of the other custodians were determined the guardianship was over and had had its stay. Mace and Remy says she maintains that Shoghi Effendi is still the guardian of the faith directing us from the Abha realm, therefore. No successor is needed or is ever to be. She holds that the guardianship is closed. Mason Remy tells how on one occasion, Rui Khanum went down to Kampala for the 1958 conference there as planned by the Guardian, and there at one of the meetings, she announced that the guardianship was bad and ended. Then later in a meeting of the hands here in Haifa, she explained herself saying that she spoke on the spur of the moment and without thought and should not have announced this. This slip of the tongue proved to me her inner conviction and thought. For those who speak without thinking always say what they really think. Remy means Ruhi Akhanam made a Freudian slip, believing one thing while outwardly intending to say something else, which uncontrollably comes out in a slip of the tongue. News reached the custodians that Herman Grossman in South America was telling people the hands had a change of mind and that undoubtedly there would be a second guardian of the cause. The custodians felt they should send a cablegram, but not knowing exactly what he said, they decided to wait till the next day to cable him. Remy points out, during the discussion someone suggested that possibly Herman thought the Universal House of Justice might re-establish the guardianship. Whereupon Ruhi Akhanam said that she was unalterably opposed to our having another guardian and that if there ever were one appointed that she would abandon Haifa and the Bahia administration and take herself somewhere up into the wilds of Tibet, there to hide herself from all Baha'i. Rimi concluded that the custodian hands were, thus, playing a double game, as it were, to deceive the Baha'is, meaning, on one hand, they were holding out hope to the Baha'is that the UHJ could perhaps appoint another guardian, while on the other hand believing inwardly that there was no way the guardianship could be reinstated, as Holly had said in his new Baha'i era, that neither the hands nor the UHJ had been endowed with authority for such appointment. Remy maintains that Rui Khanum frequently threatens to commit suicide if she can't have her way. But Millie, Collins? says there is no danger of her killing herself, that this is but a tantrum, Leroy, Lowers, thinks that Rui may snap and have to be put in an asylum. Remy relates that Rui Khanum, stated to me in a meeting of the custodians, that after her no one would ever live in the guardian's house in Haifa. The guardianists believe that Rui Khanum did not want to vacate the guardian's mansion in the event that another guardian was appointed. The guardianists consider the different roles that Rui Khanum would have, for without a guardian, she would be able to maintain an unbounded leadership within the faith, with a new guardian, she would have to vacate the guardian's mansion and have no authority whatsoever. The guardianists reason that the prospect might have been tempting to her, in lieu of the contrasts, to retain her position as first lady of the faith. Mason Rime said this relation that she once held is now the stumbling block. For because of her previous position as the contact liaison between Shoghi Effendi and the people about the Guardian, 
she was in the entire Baha'i world indeed the most important personage apart from the Guardian, and Rime says, it is plain to see that she intends that no one is to supplant Burr in this position that she has assumed, and from which she seeks to rule and to dictate the affairs of the faith.